Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is gonna be all about this, my 2005 Subaru WRX wagon. Today's video is all about this car and all about reviving it. Now it's not dead, it's not damaged, but there are several things that I want to do with this thing to bring it back to where I want it to be. So before I jump into all the things I wanna do with it, I think it's a good idea for me to go over some of the things that are already done to it, since a lot of you probably don't know much, if anything, about this car. I mean, some of you might not even know that I own this car. A lot of you found me from the Turbo Corolla video back in November, and the last video I made on this, I think, was in June. So it's been quite a minute. So on the exterior of the car, we've got a few things. We've got an STI hood scoop, not an OEM one, but a replica. It's not a carbon fiber hood scoop, it's just a replica made of plastic or fiberglass, whichever one it is. Up next, we've got the Battle Era wide body kit. The wide body was the last thing that I have installed on this car. That was the most recent video. These wheels here are 18 inch Advan Racing RG3s. They have done the job pretty well, but now with the wide body kit, they are, well, they're quite far back in. So these wheels will go very shortly and be replaced with something better, something wider, and uh, it's gonna be a good time. Next up here, we've got this atrociously big Battle Aero chassis mount wing. Bought it because it was fun and silly, and I've just kept it because, well, one, it was expensive, and two, because I've actually grown to quite liking the look of it. And that's really all I've bought this for, for the jokes and for the looks. I haven't bought it for performance. I don't think it's doing too much performance-wise. I mean, this is a hatchback after all. But either way, this atrociously big wing does make the car look more interesting. And of course, the last thing exterior-wise is the purple wrap, which is getting a little bit old and uh, starting to show its age. And that is especially apparent right back here. I mean, look at all of this. It's torn up, it's peeling off, it's looking pretty bad. And this was the first car that I've ever wrapped as well, so the quality of my workmanship installing this wrap not very good as you can see right here look at all of this creasing inside the door handles is pretty poor as well and if you look here on the quarter panel i haven't done this all in one piece i've made it into separate pieces which is uh not looking too good so this wrap is already three years old which if I had installed it well, I think it could last more than three years. Then again, this is the first car I've ever wrapped. I didn't really know what I was doing, just kind of went with it. So three years seems like a pretty reasonable time for it to last, all things considered. Now the interior of this car is quite a mess right now. I'd rather not show you at the minute until I clear it up. This car does have a gutted interior. It has no back seat. Although it used to be more gutted, it used to have not really much of anything, but I've started putting it back together. I've got a little bit tired of the whole gutted experience. It was a novelty that I enjoyed when I first did it, but over time, not having a radio, not having a back seat, not having uh, anywhere to put things in the back, really started to get old. So I'm in the process of putting the interior back together on this car, which I will probably share in some kind of update video about this car, but I won't make a full video about putting the interior back together because, well, it's just not that interesting. The one thing I will share with you from the interior of this car is this, the Cobb Access Port, the device that virtually every Subaru driver has. This is my engine management of choice. It's the easiest one. All I need to do is retain the stock ECU, plug this into the OBD port, and we're good to go. And for the time being, I don't see a reason to ditch the Cobb Access Port, despite the fact that they are starting to become a little bit more limited due to EPA restrictions. With that being said, this car is still on a Cobb off-the-shelf map. It does not have a Protune, I know, naughty, naughty me. Not to worry, this year I absolutely plan on Protuning this car once we fix some other things first. 
So if we look under the hood now, there's not too much going on here, but there is enough to where the cob off the shelf map is not going to do too well anymore. So we'll start with cooling first. We've got a Mishimoto radiator, Mishimoto expansion tank, Mishimoto fans, Mishimoto radiator stays, uh, Mishimoto everything when it comes to cooling with this car. Up at the front here, we've got a Cusco front strut bar, Cobb SF intake, which is a little bit short it's turned sideways at the minute. The MAF sensor is pointing like this now when it should be pointing like that. So I just need to get a new coupler here and make this a little bit longer so that the MAF sensor can sit properly again. Although I'm not gonna lie, I am itching to try out a new intake system, preferably one that's got a heat shield too. I'm not super convinced that I'd want to go with an intake that loops down under the bumper. An intake that sits here, that's got a heat shield around it, I think would be a good solution. Up here, we've got a Mishimoto top mount intercooler. At the minute, I don't plan to go front mount. I don't think I ever really plan to go front mount. The top mount intercooler here has been working just fine for me. Over here, we've got a Go Fast Bits blow off valve. This is the first piece here that makes the Cobb off the shelf map not a good solution for me. Sometimes when I shift, it pops a little flame out the exhaust because in that moment, it runs a little bit too rich, AKA it's not running correctly. So that needs to get tuned out. So over here, this is where the turbocharger sits. It is a stock turbo. I'd like to go bigger turbo in the future, but right now I don't really need it. But up here is the main reason why the Cobb off the shelf map is not a good fit because I've got a TL 38 millimeter external wastegate. Part of me kind of misses the internal wastegate on this car because the external wastegate is quite loud and does drown out the exhaust a little bit. And then behind the turbo going to the back of the car is an NVIDIA turbo back exhaust. We've got an NVIDIA downpipe to an NVIDIA N1 catback exhaust. Now I'm sure this was quite apparent from the start, but this car is lowered. It's on Tane Flex Z coilovers, which are sort of a medium range coilover. They're about $1,000 and they've held up just fine over the past three and a bit years. But with that being said, I do want to try something a bit on the higher end of the coilover spectrums. So these coilovers here, despite working fine right now, will probably be replaced by something even better, which is very exciting. It's always exciting to improve stuff. So now that you're caught up on where this car sits right now, here are some issues with it, and here are some things that I want to do with it. So the first issue at hand that I need to take care of first is the leaking valve cover gaskets. The main issue is on the passenger side where oil is leaking out onto my exhaust. And so every time I'm waiting at a stoplight, I always see some smoke coming out from the hood, which is not very good and could also be a fire hazard. Oil dripping onto your exhaust is definitely not ideal. I've got an entire valve cover gasket kit ready to go, ready to drop in. And we're also gonna do spark plugs at the same time because in my ownership of this car, I've never changed the spark plugs and I have no idea what condition they are. I've never taken them out to take a look. So I figure while we're in here doing the valve cover stuff, we'll just replace the spark plugs. But that's unfortunately not where the oil leaks stop. The oil pan is leaking a little bit too. Not a big deal and certainly not as big of a deal as the valve covers dripping oil onto the exhaust, but still very annoying regardless. So we will take care of that. And since we need to pull the oil pan anyway to fix that, I might as well upgrade it with a Morasso oil pan, just like I did on the Turbo Corolla and the XRS. Once we've got the leaks fixed, the next thing I want to do is rewire all of my gauges. I have five of them installed and I've got a sixth one ready to go in uh, that I'll install when I'm doing the whole rewiring process. When I installed the gauges on this car, I did quite a poor job at wiring them up. The wiring harness that I've sort of created at this point is quite a mess. It's not color coded. 
it's too long in some places. And I think one of the wires has an issue now because my oil temperature gauge no longer functions. Whenever I start the car, it goes directly to 300 degrees, which I know for a fact that a car sitting in minus 20 degrees is not going to immediately have 300 degree oil. Now, after we rewire the gauges, the next thing that I'm going to do is peel off the wrap. The purple wrap is going to disappear. I might replace it with purple again. I might not. It depends on what I'm feeling. I'm expecting to get to the point where I'm taking off this wrap in about a month or two. So there's about a month or two left of this car being purple, pretty much. And you can tell that I'm serious about unwrapping this car because, well, the front bumper is unwrapped. It's silver again. And it's also why it's not attached. This front bumper is not attached to anything. It has no clips in it. So the fog lights aren't connected. This bumper is currently hanging loose which we will do something about. And that's something that we're going to do is replace it because I will admit I have ruined this bumper. And the final battle with this car is the rust. The rust is not, not good. But a lot of the rust problems with this car can be dealt with by installing new parts, which is brilliant because that's what we're going to do. So one of the first things I wanna do is get rid of the crusty front brakes here and replace them with nice and shiny STI Brembo big brakes. It'll be much better than the stock brakes that are on this car. They'll perform better, they'll look better, and they won't be rusty, which is nice. Next thing I wanted to do back here is replace these lateral links right back there. Here at the front, we are going to do new control arms, and then we'll do a new front sway bar and new sway bar end links. We'll do the full lot. And then we'll upgrade some bushings. Now the bushings I want to go after here are the transmission mount bushings and the rear differential mount bushings. So those will be the first bushings of probably many that we will replace on this car. And then another thing we've got to do is this. You see that little rust hole there? That's no good. Now this isn't the subframe. This is, I believe it's called the C-brace. And I've checked the subframes on both the front and the rear, and it, they don't look too bad. They're definitely surface rusted, but they haven't got holes in them, which is good. The C-brace there does have a hole in it, and we're going to need to get rid of it and put a new one in. Now the first challenge is actually finding one. I think my best bet for getting a new C-brace is to find one at a junkyard. To buy one online and get it shipped I think would cost an astronomical amount of money and it just wouldn't make sense. And then of course we need to pro-tune this car as well. There we have it. This is my 05 WRX. We will be making consistent videos on this car from now on, plus consistent videos on this car plus consistent videos on the Turbo Corolla. Basically, there's a lot of things to do. So with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you are as excited about seeing this project return as I am to get started working on it and bringing it back to where I want it to be. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.